Our vision of Building for Tomorrow also includes the reestablishment of our postulancy program here in Baltimore. The postulancy is the first stage of formation for young women who wish to become little sisters. One might ask, why spend this much money for a home that only has 80 people living there? My answer to this is that there is a much bigger picture, that of serving entire families and the church through our quiet witness to the love and tenderness of God and the sanctity of life. Through our vocation of mercy, our congregation is an integral part of what makes the church a mother to the family of God. There is a spiritual radiance and impact that extends far beyond the boundaries of St. Martin's. St. Martin's home houses only 80 residents at a time, but our mission also reaches across generations and even centuries. Since our arrival in Baltimore in 1869, the Little Sisters have cared for over 15,000 elderly persons in Maryland. With your help, in the next 140 years, we will extend our mission of hospitality to thousands more. In addition to the elderly who will live in the new St. Martin's home, the new Seniors Club will extend our outreach even further into the local community. But our mission of hospitality does not end with our residents or even the future members of our senior program. It touches the lives of their families and friends. In a word, our mission touches the lives of all those with whom we come in contact each and every day. Recently, a resident in one of our homes told me that not only was her life so much better since she has come to live in the home, but that of her children as well. Finally, our mission extends beyond Catonsville through our prayers and the witness we offer as daughters of St. John Jugan and daughters of the Church. When I became a little sister, I did so, knowing that I would be caring for my elderly brothers and sisters, but I also believed it was a sure road in finding God and serving not only the elderly, but all those with whom I would come in contact every day. Only God knows how much the prayers of the little sisters and residents and the works of mercy carried out at St. Martin's are obtaining graces in the lives of those who count on our prayers. I believe they are also helping to lift up the church and further the struggle for the gospel of life. A couple of recent conversations pulled together what I've been trying to express. Last week, two of our sisters were in Florida for a major conference of Catholic University students. When they returned home, one of them told me that while standing in the concession line, she had overheard a group of young men talking about a priest whose name she recognized. Turns out, his father is a resident at St. Martin's. When Sister introduced herself to the young men, she found out that they were seminarians from Minnesota, where this priest is the rector of the seminary. You can't imagine how relieved Father is that, father, that his father is in your home, they told her. It means a lot to us, too because Father is such a great role model to us and such a wonderful priest. We don't know what we do without him. Just a few days ago, I spoke to this priest myself, and he told me how his father's admission to St. Martin's has affected his whole family. Believe me, sister, he said, priests know nursing homes, and we observe the quality of care given. Never have I seen anything that can compare with the personal and spiritual care given by the Little Sisters, not only for my father, a resident, but for my mother. It has been a tremendous relief. For the first time in years, my mother was able to get out of the house and go away for a family gathering. She hasn't gone out in years. All her anxiety and stress has been relieved thanks to St. Martin's. 
a group of young men in Florida, a seminary rector in Minnesota, and a concerned wife in Maryland, all have become a part of the web of persons whose lives have been touched by what God is doing through our work at St. Martin's and what I trust you will help us to continue to do today and tomorrow. In order to continue our mission here in Baltimore for the past year, we have been diligently working with CAM Construction and Gaudreau Architects on a design-build project, and we are in the quiet phase of a capital campaign to raise the funds for the reconstruction of St. Martin's home. We have been blessed with some wonderful early support from the Society of St. Sulpice and the Archdiocese of Baltimore. I would like to thank you all for listening to our story and our vision for the future. Please keep us in your prayers that this project will be a success. And my own personal prayer is that you will be the reason for the success of our project and claim to be a part of our family of serving the elderly at St. Martin's, and in the bigger picture, the church. God bless you, and thank you.